government mulls a vaccine distribution to undocumented immigrants and refugees. WHO confident vaccine development can adapt to COVID-19 variants. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. You're watching Updates at Noon with me, Aslani Adani. The Yang Diptuan Agong Al Sultan Abdullah Riayatuddin Al Mustafa Billah Shah and the Raja Pemaisuri Agong Tunku Haja Aziza Aminah Maimuna Iskandaria yesterday extended their Taipuzim greetings to Hindus in the country. Their Majesties conveyed their wish through a posting on the Istana Negara Facebook account. The King and Queen wish Hindus and nationwide a blessed, joyous and peaceful celebration. Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin also extended Taipuzim greetings to all Malaysian Hindus through a Facebook post. Tan Sri Muhyiddin hoped the celebrations this year would continue to foster unity and preserve the country's harmony and prosperity. The Premier thanked all Hindus for complying with the standard operating procedures SOPs by performing the rituals according to the new norms in their respective homes. He said Taipuzim this year has to be celebrated in moderation without the usual processions like in previous years so as to contain the COVID-19 pandemic. Sultan of Selangor, Sultan Sharifuddin Idris Shah and Tengku Pemaisuri of Selangor, Tengku Pemaisuri Noor Arshikin also took the opportunity to wish all Hindus in Selangor and throughout the country a happy Taipuzim celebration. The Sultan called for moder moderate Taipuzim celebration at home and according to the stipulated standard operating procedures. Istana Alam Shah, in a posting on the Selangor Royal Office Facebook page today, said Sultan Sharifuddin also reminded those who were selected to participate in transporting of the chariot to Sri Subramania Swami Temple in Batu Caves to adhere to the strict SOPs set by the National Security Council. The Sultan reminded the public to continue to follow the guidelines issued by the authorities as the COVID-19 statistics in Selangor for the last two months has showed a significant increase in the number of positive cases and deaths. Sultan Dan Sharifuddin and Tengku Pemaisuri Nora Shikin also remain hopeful that this year's Taipuzim is celebrated in harmonious and peaceful atmosphere. Malaysia and Australia have reached an agreement to implement a few key initiatives to curb and lessen the impact caused by the COVID-19 outbreak. Among initiatives agreed by both countries are collaboration in COVID-19 vaccination program and a guarantee that the market and global supply chains remain open. Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin and his Australian counterpart Scott John Morrison yesterday officiated the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership CSP in a meeting held via video conference. The Prime Minister's office in a statement said that at the meeting, the two premiers approved the action plan outlining strong initiatives under three key elements of the CSP. These elements are economic well-being, society and technology, and regional defence and security cooperation. The statement also said this partnership reflects the a high level of commitment of both sides to further expand existing strong ties in various aspects of a bilateral and multilateral cooperation. Apart from strengthening existing cooperation, this CSP also gives an opportunity for Malaysia and Australia to establish collaboration in various and new fields, including digital economy, agriculture and food security, disaster management and public health, mental health, science, Technology and Innovation, STI, Environment and Youth Empowerment. The Phase 3 clinical trial of the COVID-19 vaccine begins yesterday at nine hospitals nationwide involving 3,000 local volunteers. Health Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Adam Baba described the trial as historical and meaningful for the country, especially in the health sector. He said the clinical trial sponsored by the Institute of Medical Biology Chinese Academy of Medical Sciences, IMBCAMS, aims to examine the safety and effectiveness of the vaccine to prevent COVID-19 infection. We would like to see the protocol procedure 
uh, required and this is thing that we can use at the world level, such as sharing data on clinical trial. We hope that we benefit all nations and people all over the world. This is so important landmark again for Malaysia that we are the only country in the world that conduct clinical trial phase three COVID-19 vaccine outside China. Speaking at the virtual launch of the trial, he also said the process will be strictly monitored by the National Pharmaceutical Regulatory Agency, NPRA, and the Medical Research and Ethics Committee, MREC. The first and second phases of the trials were carried out in China, with the findings revealing a significant immune reaction towards SARS-CoV-2 antigens. In another development, the government is considering the suggestion by the Human Rights Commission of Malaysia, Suhakam, to provide free COVID-19 vaccines to individuals without citizenship, including refugees, prisoners and detainees in the country. Deputy Science, Technology and Innovation Minister Ahmad Amzad Mohamad said the battle against the deadly virus will not end if the vaccination program only focuses on Malaysian citizens. COVID-19 ini dia tak kira uh, pelarian ke warga negara ke apa ke uh, dia, dia dia boleh berjangkit kepada rakyat kita maka kerana itu secara umumnya kemungkinan besar apa ni uh, semua uh, yang ada penduduk dia yang ada di dalam negara kita ni sama ada yang berstatus warga negara dan sebagainya mungkin apa ni dipertimbangkan tapi ini tertakluk kepada keputusan akhirlah uh, sebab apa ni uh, mesti ada mekanisme juga untuk kita merundingkan dengan negara-negara asal pelarian-pelarian ini Ahmad Amzad, however, emphasized that Malaysians will be given priority in the mass vaccination program, commenting on the 1 million Pfizer vaccine doses which are expected to arrive by the end of February. Ahmad Amzad said the logistic preparation to receive and distribute the vaccines are complete. This includes storage and delivery to locations with limited accessibility and rural areas. The trial run of vaccines delivery will be carried out at Balaga, Sarawak this Friday. The Selangor Menteri Besar, Datuk Seri Amruddin Shari, said the high number of daily positive COVID-19 cases in the state has caused the people in Selangor to be very concerned, particularly when it reaches up to four digits and has yet to drop. Several factors have contributed to the spike in number of cases in the state, including population density, especially in urban areas. In a video posted on his Facebook page, Dato Sri Amaruddin reminded all residents in Selangor to remain disciplined in complying with the standard operating procedures SOP set by the authority. Dato Sri Amaruddin said the Selangor state government is increasing the number of screening tests for the community. So far, more than 19,000 tests have been carried out since the COVID-19 outbreak began and the cost is fully borne by the state administration. The Menteri Besar said Selangor government aims for another 50,000 screening tests to be conducted to help the Ministry of Health to identify positive cases in the state. He said the current situation of COVID-19 infections in Selangor is still under control and the state government is working with the federal government to establish a COVID-19 assessment centre, CAC, in nine districts in the state. Next, Marine Police Corporal charged with 144 counts of corruption. The Kuala Lumpur High Court has set 15th February to deliver its verdict on whether former Federal Court Judge Dato Sri Gopasri Ram should be recused from leading the prosecution team in the four trials of former Prime Minister Dato Sri Najib Tun Raza that are related to 1MDB. Judge Muhammad Zaini Mazlan set the date after hearing submissions from both Elite Defence Counsel Tan Sri Muhammad Shafi Abdullah and Deputy Public Prosecutor Ahmad Akram Garib. 
In his submission, Tan Sri Muhammad Shafi argued that Datuk Sri Gopal had displayed bias and bad faith by allegedly having predetermined notions of Datuk Sri Najib's guilt before he was charged in any court. This argument came from a statement made by former Attorney General Tan Sri Muhammad Apandi Ali in June last year, which was later filed as an affidavit in support of the recusal application. In the statement, Datuk Sri Gopal was sent to see the former Attorney General in January 2018 by former Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad to persuade him to detain the then Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib. Tan Sri Muhammad Shafi'i also argued the letter of appointment of Datuk Sri Gopal as the prosecutor under Section 376, Subsection 3 of the Criminal Procedure Code was not sufficient and should have been read together with Section 379. Ahmad Akram contended that the issue relating to Datuk Sri Gopal's bias and the manner of his appointment were already addressed during previous similar applications and that they had been adjudicated up until the federal court. A Marine police corporal who was charged with 43 counts of accepting bribes amounting to 146,350 ringgit on Tuesday was slapped with another 101 counts of similar offence involving more than 243,000 ringgit at the April Sessions Court yesterday. Zubairi Abdul Mutalib, 60, however pleaded not guilty to all the charges before the judge as Indra Nehru and also requested that he be tried jointly with the 101 alternatives charges made against him. The head of PSC-16 Petrol Vessel Machinery at the Marine Police Base in Kampong Aceh, Siti Awan, was charged with receiving the bribes of between 7,285 ringgit and 123,390 ringgit from seven individuals involving a total of 243,040 ringgit between May 2016 and July 2019. The bribes were as an inducement for him to not to take action against owners of several fishing boats for flouting provisions in the Fisheries Act 1985. He was alleged to have committed the offences at several locations in Sitiawan, Pera. The court allowed him bail of 48,000 ringgit with one surety for all charges and set 31st March for mention. But first, Malaysia's top men's single shuttler Li Zijia fell to another defeat against Chao Tianqian of Taiwan, this time in the BWF World Tour Finals Group A match last night. World number 10 Zijia bounced back from a 16-21 loss in the first set to equalize the match through a 21-12 win at the Impact Arena in Bangkok. However, the world number 2 proved his prowess once again to win the decider 21-11 to secure a point in the match which lasted close to an hour according to the match report on the Badminton World Federation's website. This is Zijia's fifth defeat to Tian Chen, the most recent being the 17-21, 15-21 loss in the Yonex Thailand Open quarterfinals two weeks ago. Later today, Zijia will face first seed Victor Aselsen of Denmark, who is in good form after winning the Yonex Thailand Open and Toyota Thailand Open, while his final group fixture will be against Indonesian Anthony Sinisuka Ginting on Friday. Only two top shutters from each group will advance to the semi finals scheduled to take place on Saturday. Earlier last week's Toyota Thailand Open finalist Aaron Chia Suho Yik opened their Group B campaign with a 21-14, 21-19 victory over South Korean's Choi Sul Gyu Seong Seung Jae in 38 minutes. The world number nine pair were comprehensively beaten in the final against Chinese Taipei duo Li Yang Wang, Chi Lin, but said making their first BWF World Tour final in two years gave them confidence coming into this backdated season finale. Untuk game hari ini kita memang satisfied lah sebab kita sebelum main kita ada bincang match semua so apa yang kita bincang kita uh, Dapat tangkap dengan uh, Surah baca Penang punya game So kita main agak smooth lah Saya rasa Kita akan beri yang terbaik Dan harap boleh Pergi lagi jauh dan Capai target kita the second sees the next face Russian pair Vladimir Ivanovov Ivan Sozonov to book their place In the semi-finals
In the women's doubles, Chao Mei Kwan, Li Mengyan won all the Malays in the counter against Vivian Hu, Yap Cheng Wen, 21-16, 10-21-215 in a battle that lasted over an hour. Performance hari ini uh, lebih kurang uh, average okay saja. Uh, on the first game, kami pressure dekat dia orang. Uh, kami attack, keep attack, attack and then we manage to go through. Tapi on the second set, uh, kami lawan angin. Kami tidak lose focus sikit lah. Uh, dia orang smash uh, side, side and then kami tidak uh, pagi perhatian ini. Tapi on the rubber game, we come back and we managed to win them. Chao and Lee play South Korean's Lee Soo-hee, Shin Seung chan later today, while a daunting task awaits Vivian and Yap, who will play top seeds and world number eight, Gracia Poli and Apriani Rahayu of Indonesia. Reigning Super League champions Johor Darul Takzim JDT are set to lock horns with Chinese Super League champions Jiangsu FC in the 2021 Asian Football Confederation Champions League ACL Group Stage match. The two teams alongside with Japan's Nagoya Grampus and the playoff, a three-winner between the South Korea and Thailand representatives have been placed in Group G in the draw conducted at the AFC House in Kuala Lumpur yesterday. This will be the third appearance of the Southern Tiger squad in the campaign following their debut in the 2019 season. In the 2020 season, JDT had to withdraw from the campaign as they were unable to travel to Qatar for the resumption of the competition last November because of the the closures implemented by the government to curb the spread of COVID-19. With the draw, JDT Malaysia's sole representatives in the tournament will face an uphill task in their quest to reach the knockout stage for the first time. Meanwhile, the 2020 Super League runners-up Kedah Darul Aman FC, KDA FC and third place Terengganu FC TFC are set to have some exciting matches in the 2021 Asian Football Confederation Cup. Following the draw ceremony at the AFC House, KDA FC being in Port 1 of the ASEAN Zone have been drawn in Group H with Lion City Sailors of Singapore, Saigon FC of Vietnam and the play of a two-winner. TFC being in Port 3 are set to face the Philippines' Kaya FC Iloilo, Shan United or Ayawadi United of Myanmar and Geelong Int of Singapore in Group 1. The 2019 champions Al Ahed FC of Lebanon are placed in Group A alongside Al Hid of Bahrain, Al Wada of Syria and Al Nasser of Oman. The centralised 2021 AFC Cup group stage will kick off in the South, Central and East Zones on May 14th and before the West Zones commences on 23rd May with the ASEAN Zone matches scheduled to take place from 22nd to 28th June. Each team in group stage will compete in a single match around Robin format. The 2021 AFC Cup Final is scheduled for 26th of November. That concludes today's edition of Updates at Noon. In our top story, government malls a vaccine distribution to undocumented immigrants and refugees. Tune in to News at 10 coming up at 10 p.m. on Salaran Berita RTM on My Previews Channel 123. You can also stream the news by surfing RTM's My Click. Thank you. I'm Aslan Yadani. Stay tuned to TV2 and goodbye for now.